In this video you will learn how to implement an infinite loading of data inside React. And the most flexible and comfortable way to implement it inside React is by using two libraries. First of all we want to use React Query, and if you don't know what it is, this is a library which synchronizes API data with local data inside the component. It is really amazing if you need to make an API calls and you want to avoid using useEffect. It also has caching, refetching inside, but here we are interested just in a single method and it is use infinite query. It allows us in a comfortable way to work with API to get data for next pages. I would say this is 70% of the logic that we need to implement such feature. Another 30% is a library which is called React Infinite Scroll Component. It doesn't do anything regarding API at all and this is just a client side. What it does, it renders for you a loading or it calls fetching data when it is needed. Which actually means it calculates the position of bottom screen when we reached it and refresh data accordingly. And actually these two libraries is the best solution that I know if you need infinite loading inside React. So first of all let's install both of them. We need to install here React Infinite Scroll component and after this npm install 10 stack React Query. And first we must configure React Query correctly and in order to do that we must wrap inside React Query provider our whole application. This is why here we must import inside our main.js from tanstack React Query, first of all query client and secondly query client provider. And here on the top we want to create a property query client. And in order to do that we must call new on query client. The next step here is to wrap the whole provider with query client provider where inside we are given client which we just created and this is our query client. And after our app we must close query client provider. So this is the full configuration that we need for React query. Now I want to jump inside app.js where we will implement the whole logic. And first of all here on the top I want to create a method which returns for us a promise. And actually here I want to use a public API from realworld.io in order to fetch data. This is why here let's create a method getUsers and this is an async method. And inside we are getting an object with page param. And as it can be undefined, I want to default it to zero. Now inside I want to get a response back by calling a wait and fetch. And inside fetch we want to provide our API URL. And in our case it will be https api.realworld.io slash api slash articles where we are providing a limit end of set. And as you can see here our offset is exactly page param property. And if you don't know how offset is working, for the first page we are fetching our 10 articles starting from offset 0, for the second page starting from offset 10, 20, 30 and so on and so on. So we are just adding the amount of articles on the page. And here back I want to get our data and for this I am waiting here for the JSON from the response. And here back I want to spread our data and I want additionally to pass here a property previous offset which is a page param. And in order to understand what we are doing you must see an API call. This is an object with property articles and this is an array with data. Also additionally we have here articles count and this is the total number of articles. What we are doing here we are merging data with previous offset which is page parameter. Why do we need it like this? We want inside React Query to give enough data so we know everything that we need to. And we need here several things. First of all our articles with offset. Secondly articles count. This is important to calculate how many pages do we have. And previous offset is our previous page. If we don't know our previous page we don't know what next page we must fetch. So our promise method is fully ready, now we can use React Query. And what I want to use here is use infinite query. And as you can see it is auto imported from Tanstack React Query. Now inside we are providing some configuration. First of all query key and let's name it users. Secondly query function and this is the most important part, this is our get users. So key means where we will store and cache our data, query function means what promise we are trying to call to get this data. And the last one here will be get next page parameter and here we are getting our last page data. 
And what is last page? This is exactly everything that we returned here, which means array of articles, then articles count and previous of set. And our get next param function must return a new page param. Just to remind you, inside get users, we are getting page param inside the object. And essentially, this is what we are using for offset. This is the most important part. And using infinite query can't really know what do we want to get back with the next try. This is why here we must do all calculations to get the next offset. So here I want to check if our last page dot previous offset plus 10 is bigger than last page dot articles count, then we already have too much, which means we are trying to fetch a page which does not exist because we already showed all our pages. Then we want to return here false. In other case, what we want to return here is our last page dot previous offset plus 10. And here is what we are getting back. We are getting back lots of different properties, but essentially for this application, we want to get back our data, then fetch next page, this is a function, and has next page. And now here what I want to console log is our data that we are getting, so we can check if it's working at all. As you can see in browser after page reload, we are getting our data, and here we have our page params, which is undefined by default, and here are our pages. And as you can see, pages is an array with indexes. So here we have our first page with articles, articles count, and previous offset. This is exactly what we returned. And here are our 10 articles. So this is the API call, and this is what we are getting back. But as you can see here, the format is not really comfortable to render data on the screen. Here we have our pages, and then inside we have articles in every single item. What I want to do here, I want to create an additional property where we're merging all this data. So here I want to call data with question mark because by default it is undefined. Here we're getting pages and we're calling reduce. And what we want to do with reduce, we want to get all our pages. This is why here by default it is an empty array. And then here we're getting inside reduce access to our accumulator and the specific page. And here I want to merge our existing accumulator, which is an array, and I want to spread here page.articles, which actually means at the end here inside articles, we will get a list of our articles. Let's check this out. Here are our articles, as you can see in browser now. First of all, we had here undefined, and after this we had our list of articles. And we're getting undefined because by default data is undefined, and now here we have our nice flat array. So actually you can use React Query just for the business logic and implement client side on your own by calculating the bottom of your container. But actually this is why we want to use a component which makes it easier. So here I want to import infinite scroll from React infinite scroll component. And here on the bottom after our h1 we want to render a component infinite scroll. And inside we must provide lots of stuff. First of all data length. And this is the amount of articles that we already have. So here are articles. And if we have articles so it is not undefined then we want to read length. In other case it will be zero. Also we have here next and this is a function which will be called, this is a callback, when we are scrolling to the bottom of the page. And here we want to use fetch next page, which actually means this fetch next page is a function from our use infinite query and our infinite scroll will call it automatically. Also here is has more, which is boolean, this is our has next page property. And the last one here is load, this is what we are rendering while loading data. So here we can simply make a div with words loading. And now here I want to close infinite scroll and inside we want to render a markup. And this is exactly where we are rendering all our data. So inside div I want to render our articles and we need to check here that they exist. And if they exist then we want to use here articles map. So we are mapping through our array of articles and here we are getting access to the specific article and index. And inside here I want to render div with key index and here we need a class name. And here I already prepared an element class name which just gives some height and width to the element. And inside this div I just want to render article title. Which actually means we are not rendering our markup outside somewhere, we are rendering it inside infinite scroll. And for infinite scroll the most important part is do we have more pages, how loading is looking like, how to fetch more articles, and what is the length of all articles. Let's check if it's working. 
I'm jumping inside browser and as you can see here how our article is looking like. And what I did here is just a border and the height, so we can scroll something. As you can see on initialize we are getting just single fetch and these are our 10 articles. Now I want to activate network so you can see how it works. I'm scrolling and we are getting articles with offset 10. I'm scrolling more and we are getting more articles. Here are articles with limit 10 and offset 20. And as you can see more and more articles are being fetched and rendered on the screen. And every single time our component is re-rendered and here are all our articles which are concatenated. Which actually means with every single API call we are getting new page with its articles. As you can see here I scrolled to the very end and they don't get more API calls because it is not possible. We are getting to this condition that our offset plus 10 is bigger than articles count. And then we simply don't do an API call and as you can see I am in the very bottom of all articles. And actually if you are interested to know how to build alerts inside React without any libraries make sure to check this video also.